Yay, we, welcome to the Gossip Girl fan club meeting. First dude, ever. that's after this one. That's after this. The inaugural. Oh, okay. This is the podcast. Oh, that's right. Alright, we saw Paranormal Activity 3. And... More like survived it. More like survived it. Thank God you guys are okay. Yeah. What What did you think, Matt? Um, I thought it was the best one of the three, but when it comes to enjoying it, I want to I want to impress to everybody. Go see it as soon as you can while the theaters are as full as possible. It makes the experience so much better when like everybody else is kind of freaking out. Oh, there's some bad things that go with it. When yeah. I, saw it, I had I had people that spoke Arabic to my left and people that were speaking Chinese <laughs> to my right, and they were both translating for each other. <laughs> like, you to translate what happened, there was a big, scary, bumpy noise. Like, is that different in a different language? I don't know. Yeah, there's definitely some cons that can go along with the full theater. Plenty of cons. Yeah, yeah we, went, we went together with um, Victor, who was supposed to be here, and there were some people sitting in front of them making comments. Like, for example, when uh, they're in Grandma's house and there's a bunch of cult people coming towards the door, the guy said, oh, that's just Jehovah's Witnesses, that happens to me. And Victor thought it was the funniest thing ever. And he thought his whole commentary was funny and they were cracking up the whole time. Yeah, he talked through the entire movie. That was the funniest thing he said and they thought that he was absolutely hilarious. Yeah. So yeah, it was, I mean, they were pretty and, distracting. Yeah. But, do you go see it with a full crowd, it's worth it. Because when it's like a scary or creepy part, everyone's like, you know, on the edge of their seat and just screaming and... Yeah. Um, you just you gotta see it early. Funny or not, but there was one part right at the beginning where, you know, someone jumps out of a closet and the guy seriously got up and ran out of the movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> he was so scared. He got up and ran out of the movie theater. And then, like, he walked back in like nothing happened. Like, he went out of the bathroom. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that probably was the scariest jump part. Yeah, that one's pretty jumpy, scary. Jumpy, part. and then there's just a lot of creative camera work, like suspense yeah. and ca camera work. Better, better than the first one, I thought. Yeah, the fan or the the camera on the oscillating fan was genius. I thought, like, great yeah. building suspense and just a, a really smart way to do that. Yeah, I mean, you already know the plot. Creepy stuff's happening, and somebody tapes it. So, but they taped it in a lot of creative ways. I, don't, I, don't I think they're they're really well, like surprisingly well written. Like yeah. for for a second and third installment, they were both like really smartly tied in together. Like it wasn't just oh the first one we did really well. Let's you know do another, you know, like you know final destination or whatever. Like they really tie these in together and they're one complete story. Um, I really enjoy the third one a lot. Yeah, definitely worth. I would seeing. say it's you know every bit as good as the first one, if not better. I would too. It's definitely the scariest of all three. Um, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, the first two, they, they kind of, you know, the first half an hour, 45 minutes, there's, you know, they're trying to build things up. But this, third, I think people thought, well, well, if they don't build it up, then it won't be as effective as scare at the end. That's not true at all. They, they had scares throughout the whole thing, and it was totally effective. Everything was great. Mm-hmm. And... The humor was good in this one. There was a lot of humor, more so than the others yeah. that I can remember. And it's a lot funnier than the other two. <clears throat> yeah, it's funnier, scarier. Surprise! I was shocked how good it was, really, because it's the third one, which are usually bad. It's yeah. a it's a strange director, not strange, but someone who has it was a yeah director. kind of weird choice. I'll tell you right now, where the two girls do Bloody Mary in the preview, that's not actually in the movie. We actually watched the preview again, and a lot of it's not. A lot of the things in the pre the trailer aren't in the film at all. So that was kind of cool, too. A cool marketing thing, you know. You go in expecting something. What? Yeah, they must have done that on purpose. Yeah, definitely. I think that's cool. Did a great job with this film. Oh, man, yeah. I just loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, it's fun. It was scary, just everything you want in a scary movie. It almost felt like being in a haunted house, like walking through a haunted house. You know, like you know a scare's come in, everybody's anticipating it, but then it comes and you're still scared and Yeah. And I was with Susie and yeah. she was sitting next to me going, Oh Jesus. Oh god, I can't I can't So it really felt like I was in a haunted house because there's always someone, you know I'm pretty sure she was crying. 
I there might have been a few tears. A few times. It was almost. I just had to ignore her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was worried about you. You should have been sitting over on the other side with the guy who was cracking jokes the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Maybe you could have yeah. laughed at it. Yeah. I didn't prepare a better or worse. So. <laughs> it's better than most it's scary worse movies. Worse than the first and second one. Yeah. Better. I'd, I'd say better. I think, yeah, I don't know. I think it's on par with the first. I really, really like the first and second one as well as this one. If it's better, it's. I think it's barely better. But yeah, it's very, I mean, it's on par or better. I think as far as like. The humor, well, then the first one, I haven't seen the second one, sorry. But the humor was good, the creative shots, like, they weren't lazy at all with the suspense, you know, I mean, they had just every shot was creative and they took something their time. new. Took they their didn't, time. like, rush anything or, you know, put cheap scares in there, they took their time with everything. Yeah, it's awesome. There's a babysitter scene <clears throat> where a babysitter comes to watch the kids. I really love that one, um, just because the babysitter knows they're videotaping so she's trying to stay cool but yeah I don't know it's great the one problem I had is it, in the other movies it's like a little camera you know or a security camera or whatever but in this one it's a big 80 shoulder mount camera so this guy's you know running around from demons with this big shoulder mount it's just not as practical not really has, did that ever happen I mean they were all on yeah. tripods so no when he was running time he ran from no it. both the guy the whole time at the end and I'm walking through the house what the last 15 minutes is him walking through the house with a shoulder cane. That's cam. true. And then the, yeah. the buddy came and did it. The buddy came, his film buddy came, and he was helped the whole Bloody Mary scene. Or not Bloody Mary scene. So it happened Batman twice. Scene. I mean, it's like the whole movie was yeah. a shoulder-mounted camera. I just, it's just yeah. something I definitely thought. I never yeah. thought of the cameras in the first one being cumbersome. Yeah. And like, even in, I just thought Although in the first one, he had a pretty large camera as well. Did he? I just never thought about it. Just yeah. when you think 80s film, or 80s right. video, you think... And man, like, okay, that's it. So do we want to try to, like, deconstruct the story and what actually happened? I don't know. We have a couple minutes, know. if you want. Sure, go ahead, because that was something Victor talked a lot about, is kind of the story and what makes sense and questions. Well, they kind of talk about a little bit, in the second one, where um, the stepdaughter and her boyfriend are on the internet, they talk about how the demon is after a firstborn male because of a deal that, you know, someone along the bloodline made. Right. The way that it is, you know, they came after the baby hunter in the second one. And that was the, you know, I, I don't know what advantage the they had from, you know, raising Toby or summoning Toby. Because really it seems like Toby just fucks with them all. But, um... Well, I mean, isn't that what a cult is kind of all about? I mean... I guess, seems, but usually, you know, like, if you're summoning a demon, it's because you want him to do something for you, like, you know, kill a rival or ruin someone's crops. <laughs> well, maybe they want the demon to be part of their bloodline, you know, so they're they're wanting the demon to kind of take over Well, so did they grandson. want Toby to marry Christy? Because they kind of said that in the third one. Or did they just want Hunter? Or And then in the third one, or in the first one, I guess, third one in, along the timeline, why did it end up going after Katie when it seemed like Christy is the one it had the strongest connection to? Well, so in the second one, it was going after Christy, but remember they did the the little spell or trickery to to make it go after Katie instead. Yeah, but then it got pissed off and came back and killed Christy. Right. I think, but and then because it went and took the baby, I thought like its ultimate goal was always to get the baby. Yeah. I don't know. I just don't know. I'll have to wait till the fourth yeah, one. Yeah, maybe something more will be explained in the fourth one. Yeah, I was going to say that too, is I think like as packed as the theater was, and it's only going to get better like during Halloween weekend. And it's still, uh, and they maintain like it's still original and it's still entertaining, and it's not, it hasn't gone to a joke yet, you know what I mean, where, where I saw kind of did. Well, I, whereas every movie pretty Final much turns up, Jaws, yeah. Final Destination, Friday the 13th. Every horror movie ends up a joke, but this one's not a joke yet. I just thought you guys would laugh when I said that thing about ruining someone's crops. We did. Laugh. We did. You just couldn't see. We laughed. We laughed really. Hard. It was like a silent laugh. We were laughing so hard, we were like <laughs> couldn't breathe. <laughs> All right, so go out and see it early. Yeah, you want to enjoy this movie the most? Go see it early, or like you know, just watch it in the dark. You know. Suspend your belief a little bit. Yeah, the camera stuff is cheesy. No one would really do that, but you gotta suspend your belief a little bit. Alright. Thanks for watching.